I see so many people fall into the trap of thinking that being a software developer is all about the technical skills, right? It's all about knowing the syntax of JavaScript or Python or knowing the specifics about .NET Core, the .NET framework or the React framework or data structures and algorithms. Technical skills are important, but there are other skills that you're going to want to master, whether you're an aspiring developer, you're self-taught and you're trying to teach yourself this, or even if you're new in the career and just want to get better and have a successful career. So in this video, I'm going to lay out the five most impactful non-technical skills skills that you'll want to cultivate to have a very fruitful and long career. I'm going to give you some in-depth tips of how to improve each of these areas. The first thing that you'll notice when you learn to code is that there's a lot of thinking going on. Most, if not all of your time are going to be spent doing things like reading or watching tutorials and videos or playing around with your code. The work from an outsider's perspective looks pretty boring. And look, the work to be a software developer is pretty mundane. It's just one little thing after the other. But here's the thing, you're going to have to spend hundreds, if not thousands, of hours doing these mundane tasks where you're sitting and thinking. So the first skill that you're really gonna to wanna to refine is your ability to focus intensely. So if you find it difficult to pull yourself away from YouTube or Facebook or TikTok or to really sit down and do the work, then learning to code is not gonna be fun for you. And I really urge you if that if you struggle to focus that this should be your number one priority. Now look, improving your ability to focus is something you have to consciously work on. It will not just get better randomly. Now, as far as improving your focus, there are two ways I recommend going about and doing it. Number one is to cut out a lot of that novel stimulus in your life there are so many things like your phone, social media, TV, which are constantly trying to give you quick hits and distractions and are pulling your attention in a million different ways. That's very bad for your attention span. And number two is to look at it as you want to progressively get better with it over time. So if you can't even sit down for 15 minutes to read a book, what I would recommend is setting a goal for 15 minutes to do that for maybe two weeks and then move the bar up to 20 minutes. And then after that, move it up to 25 and 30 and 35. You want to slowly get yourself over time to more and more focus and attention. All right, now from there, I have to bring up something that it really makes me laugh when I hear what people think programming is all about. These people think that if you just learn the ins and outs of a programming language, if you learn the specific syntax, that that's what makes a programmer a programmer. This is absolutely wrong. Let me put it to you this way. You could have an excellent grasp of the rules of the syntax of any programming language, but that doesn't mean that you can actually do anything with it. It doesn't mean you can actually write code that's gonna create a software application. This would be the equivalent to somebody learning how to hammer a nail into wood and think Meaning that they could build a home. That is not at all the same. In order to build a home, you have to understand the fundamentals and have experience in building homes and how all the tools and materials go together. So if being a programmer is not about just knowing syntax, then what is the key ingredient here? It's about your analytical skills. So if you've ever heard people say that to be a good programmer, you have to be a good problem solving, this is what we mean by analytical skills. So that means you have to have strong skills in identifying and defining problems, breaking those problems into smaller chunks or pieces, analyzing data and information, and then implementing and testing some of those solutions that you're gonna come up with. Now this may leave you thinking, how in the heck am I gonna get better at analytical thinking? What is the path forward here? For me, a lot of the things that have helped me to improve my analytical thinking skills are just things like reading books, understanding and learning more about philosophy, for example, even things like Sudoku, like playing Sudoku. I think playing video games can be super helpful. You'll find a lot of software developers play video games because there's a lot of analytical thinking that can go into that. Now look, at the end of the day, to think more analytically or improve those skills, I think the best thing you can do is just get your hands dirty and just start working on coding problems and building applications, and you'll find that your analytical skills will get better. If you do all the things I mentioned, it can help a lot. Now the next skill that I want to introduce here is a secret skill. It's something only I'd say like 1% of software developers have. And that is the skill of going down below and smashing the like button if you haven't done that already. It's just my expert opinion. Anyways, uh, before I became a software developer, I wish somebody had pulled me aside and explained that there is no mountaintop that you're ever gonna reach with software development. There's no place you're gonna get with your skills where everything is simple and there are no challenges left. As you get better at this and your skill level increases, you'll be thrown harder and harder challenges. You'll be given more and more responsibility. And look, you have to understand that software development is pretty much just endless problems, right? You're given a problem, you solve that, and you go on to the next over and over and over again. It never ends. So basically the one intangible skill that you want to develop over time is grit. That's right, I said grit, which to me means the ability to persevere through hard times or through some really hard problems. It's really important that you have an eagerness to solve problems, but also a sense of positivity about you because what I've seen in this career is if you don't have those two things that the 
Endless nature of problems will make you jaded and cynical. There is no short of proof of this, by the way. If you go to my comment section, you will see occasionally somebody goes, oh my God, don't become a software developer. It's awful. You work for somebody and all they do is just waste your time or something like that, right? I worked as a barista, I've worked as a car salesman, I've worked in restaurants as a waiter. Being a software developer is way better than any of those. The pay is better, the work environment is better. So I would recommend that if you're gonna really do this, you develop some grit. Now to actually develop the skill of having grit, there are two things that I find are really important. The first is you have to develop a passion for software development. Now, a lot of people think passion is something that just kind of happens, but you can do things actively to have more passion for software development. I think the most important thing is to follow things that interest you. Don't just take jobs for money, do things that you find interesting, intellectually stimulating, always go down that path with your career because that's gonna keep you motivated. Now, the second thing I think you could do to develop grit is to do hard things in other areas of your life. Now, you don't have to be David Goggins and run like super marathons or anything like that, but anything you do in your life, whether it's learning uh, other skills or being disciplined in other areas of your life will help you to develop the grit that's necessary all around in your personality that you can apply to software development. Okay, so on to my next skill here. Now, contrary to popular belief, software developers often don't work in isolation, right? They actually do have to talk to other human beings sometimes. Now, I'd actually say a lot of your success will be predicated with how you communicate with people on your team, whether it's developers or people on your project team. For example, if you can't communicate something technical to someone on your team, you are going to lack effectiveness. So the fourth skill on my list is strong communication skills. Now to develop these strong communication skills requires a lot of practice. You just wanna do this over and over again. But here's the best part, is that every opportunity that you have to speak to somebody in a technical manner is an opportunity for you to get a little bit better. Now the main points I would say as far as communication are you want to be concise, meaning you say things in as little words as possible. You wanna be precise, so get right to the point. And the other thing is you always want to know your audience, right? So speaking to a senior developer will be different from speaking to a junior developer. You have to know if you're speaking to a project manager, somebody who is non-technical, that you just can't throw technical terms at them and you may have to explain things a little bit more. But every opportunity to communicate and the more that you can practice this, whether if you're a part of a Discord channel, if you're part of a Facebook group, which you can always be a part of mine and try to communicate in there, it's gonna make you a better developer. Okay, so all the skills that I've talked about so far would mean nothing without this next skill that you're gonna to wanna to cultivate. Keep in mind that when you're actually working as a software developer, you're going to have a full plate. That means you're gonna have many work items that are gonna be assigned to you, things that you have to do in a certain day. There are also meetings that you're gonna to have to attend. There are new programming languages, frameworks, technologies that you're gonna to have to use in your job. Maybe there's training seminars that you have to attend. So look, your time is definitely going to be stretched thin. So if you wanna make the most of your limited hours as a software developer, you want to develop very strong personal management skills. Now let's keep this as simple as possible. I think people who manage themselves well are organized and they're disciplined. Look, you don't have to be organized or disciplined. I know plenty of software developers who are not that organized or not that disciplined, but I'm talking to a specific audience here and I'm thinking that a lot of you guys have really high goals. You wanna make a lot of money. Maybe you wanna make a quarter million dollars a year. Maybe you wanna start your own startup. Maybe you wanna work for the, the fang companies of the world. If you wanna do that, you're going to have to be more organized and disciplined than most of the people who are out there right now. Now, as far as becoming a better self-manager, I actually don't think it's that complicated. Um, there are three things that really come to mind for me. The first one is you wanna make sure you have clear-cut goals and you're constantly reevaluating those goals. Most people, when they become software developers, they really lose sight of the bigger picture of what they want. And that's really bad for self-management because you don't even know where to start if you don't have clear-cut goals. From there, you wanna make sure that you're planning often. That means you're gonna plan your days and your weeks to make sure that you are constantly moving towards those clear-cut goals that you have. And the last thing I'd say is just make sure you have some form of accountability. You have some sort of system that you set up for yourself where you're constantly making sure that you are checking in. Are you getting close to your goals? Are you doing the right things on a consistent basis? Now that we've run through some of the most impactful skills that you can cultivate as a software developer, I just wanna say that if you are an aspiring self-taught programmer and you wanna work with me in my mentorship program, I will leave a link in the description below of how you can do that. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.